All right, there we go. Let's kick this off. Cool. So, um, thanks for joining. 29th community call. We're going to dive into a few little things. So I think, um, Roland, I think maybe we can bring you up and Dean. Let's, um, let's maybe touch on some engineering product stuff. Hey, before we jump into that, I, I will mention the space earlier today was very cool. It was mm. for the um, three pool on osmosis. And so the participants were osmosis, MakerDAO, Agoric, uh, me talking about IST, um, mm. because everyone else was asleep, I think, um, and, uh, and, and CMDX. Um, with their CMSD product, so so a th you know a stable swap of core um, uh, stable tokens for the Cosmos ecosystem. So it was a, it was a good discussion. It's well worth checking out. With that, I will now turn it over to Roland because everyone's pretty much heads down getting this release out. So tell us about the release, Roland. Yeah, uh, yeah. As Dean says, we're we're really heads down and in, in sort of coming up to the last stages of getting towards functional testing for the release. And so that that really is going to define February is the, the Vault release coming gradually into testnet, uh, going through functional testing for not only the, the front ends, but also obviously the contracts and then testing the Oracle network. And I see Simply Staking is, is here on the call. Uh, they've done a, a bunch of great work leading that. Um, and then um, also starting to test uh, the liquidation auctions. So, you know, all of that is, is pretty inter-protocol focused, but um, as we've discussed in previous community calls, it's really driven a whole lot of Agoric specific work around, you know, driving new features into governance, driving new features into the smart wallet, um, driving new performance uh, testing and, and things that are gonna be necessary for liquidations that weren't necessary necessarily for the PSM. Um, and so really, you know, as Dean said, we're, we're heads down. That's that's the story of February. And so we're really excited to, to have that work start, um, which which should be kicking off next week. Yep, yep, yep. And, you know, the core thing, obviously, on the Agoric side is it's it's the the upgrade that gets us to the point to be able to incrementally upgrade individual contracts um, and that sort of thing. And so it's so it's exciting, not just for enabling vaults and, and the next round of, of, of inter-protocol support, but also enabling the mainnet two applications uh, 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 going forward. So I'm, I'm really excited about, it's just so nice to see this technology come together. Um, with that, one of the key things is of course, all the security elements of that. Jesse. Sure. So as mentioned on the roadmap, uh, our security engineering team has been doing some threat modeling work of the vaults implementation that really helps us enumerate risk and identify places where potential bad things can happen that we're able to prevent through design, remediation, mitigation. Uh, so that's been particularly um, have been particularly fun this go round. Um, we are still iterating on our automated security testing of excess. Many of you have heard me mention uh, Modable and fuzzing. And I think we're right around the first birthday of going after that code with Fazili and all kinds of other tools. There's been quite a bit of work um, looking at various sanitizers and things that can help us get deeper into that code. But we've had a really, really fruitful mission over the past year um, since we, we purchased our first couple of uh, devices to dedicate to fuzzing that code. And it's been really cool to see that come together. Um, most of February, as our team on the engineering side and product side are continuing to work on vaults, uh, there's preparation for all of the fun security assessments and reviews uh, coming up. We're still evaluating some ways that we may be able to engage independent researchers, um, but I think I've at least met my legal requirement of mentioning anything about security audits on every uh, community call that we have. On the community front, we have a lot of updates for validators. Um, m many of you, if you're paying attention in the Discord channels uh, for EmoryNet and for MainNet, you've probably seen us mention a Pismo C upgrade. Um, Pismo C is a small point release with bug fixes, um, security enhancements, all that good stuff. And we've been working on it for a while, but we did hit pause during Lunar New Year. Um, we wanted to make sure that our validators who were celebrating that, you know, got a chance to celebrate and didn't have to worry about a network upgrade. 
Um, we've got a handful of bug fixes in there, or maybe a little less than a handful. So there's the anacrophobia fix, which we'll make sure is a consensus upgrade across all nodes. The fix for um, interchain account squatting, which we'll have a fun time testing out on the test net and making sure that the fix holds. And then there's also um, a very recent issue, part of the reason that this is taking a little bit longer than we had planned. Uh, late last week, a bug in uh, the Tendermint P2P layer emerged. Um, that software is now called Comet BFT, but the fix is in the Tendermint repo because changing things quickly is very hard. A whole other Cosmos adventure we can talk about at another time. Uh, but those fixes combined mean that once we have finished our testing, we will be cutting a release and we anticipate that validators will start um, putting that to the test in EmoryNet within the next few days. Um, if validators say that we are good to go and it passes all of the tests that they would like it to pass, then we will look to them for the signal that it's time to support mainnet coordination and you may see uh, mainnet go, yay, new software in the very near future. Um, beyond that, there's some discussion about our 2023 uh, delegation program going on. Um, we have a policy for this program to really set our expectations and, and you know, share with everyone at the same time how we're thinking about the program. This discussion will probably kick off next week as we wrap up a couple of additional details. And for validators, we will have an office hour on February 23rd at 1730 Universal Time, yay, or 9.30 a.m. Pacific. And we'll have more updates about the delegation program, but also um, what we're working on for vaults and maybe what some of that upgrade process might look like uh, during that time period. If there's anything the validators want to talk to us about, we're hanging out in Discord. Y'all are still hilarious with the jokes, and we're super excited to get to work on our first upgrade of the year. That's me. Very cool. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm excited to see these fixes go live, having having been. Uh, 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 seeing the development and testing. The other thing I wanted to do, you mentioned Modable, is I do want to I do want to shout out to them because you know we we work with them on getting fuzzing set up. But two part two things happen. One is they really took to it and have been have been you know driving it. And as things as you know edge things get found and stuff like that, they they roll out fixes. The other is as a side effect of this. You know, all those light bulbs and washing machines and, you know, uh, uh, medical devices and what have you that really, truly internally are running embedded system JavaScript, they're all a little better off because of the work that, you know, we're all doing to, to harden this stuff uh, for smart contracts. So that's kind of a cool side effect. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Uh, is Rick around? Hey, hey, everybody. Can you hear me? I, I I can. We went, we haven't heard from DCF in a while. We'd love to hear what's up there. <laughs> There's a few things going on. I love coming to these community meetings and, and hearing all the stuff that's happening with the Gork. It's really amazing. You guys are, are doing so much right now. It's phenomenal. And, and congratulations. Um, on the DCF side of things, there were a couple of things I wanted to bring to the community's attention. Uh, in terms of, of practical matters on the public good side that we're trying to push forward, there's a couple of things to note. First, uh, we are starting to engage with Simply Staking as well right now around uh, the Oracle network. Uh, you know, we do view Oracles as, as a public good. This is something that's going to be useful in a wide variety of contexts, uh, and it's a big lift, uh, and we're happy to be involved in that and happy to support that. Uh, stay tuned as more details start to emerge on that across the next couple of weeks. Also, uh, we are about to kick off our grants program. Yay! Uh, we are in the process of recruiting at this time for a grant program manager, and we're having discussions with the board about how much of the treasury we're setting aside for the grants program in 2023, as well as what we view as our priorities and kind of, you know, so kind of right sizing uh, our approach to grants, if you will. 
Now, the reason I flag it for you here on the community call is not only have we been promising this for a while, but we are willing to be opportunistic in this interim period when we're doing the recruiting. And if somebody has a great idea for a public good for this ecosystem that they'd like to pitch to us for funding, bring it on. Uh, send us a DM directly here in Twitter. Reach out to me. We'll have a conversation. And if it makes sense, we will get you in the pipeline now and start fast tracking that. So for all intents and purposes, this is the informal launch of the DCF grants program. So you guys are the first to know. Um, in terms of, of slightly less exciting news for the community, but just to keep you up with what's going on with DCF, uh, as you've heard me say many times, uh, trying to get things together for a foundation company in the Caymans in, the, in light of this shifting regulatory environment is, is actually a bit of a task. Uh, things are actually coming together really well right now. One of the big accomplishments for us this last week is we filled our board. The fifth board member, Julian Morris, accepted our offer and has joined us. Julian gives us a director based in the Caymans. He also gives us another director with a solid grounding in economic theory and a good understanding of the regulatory environment, which is super important for us. So uh, welcome, Julian, if perchance you get a chance to hear this recording at some point in time. Uh, we are also approaching the anniversary of our initial round of delegation, and that means we're going to be taking a look at all of the validators that we have delegated to, seeing how they're doing with their pledges, heads up people, and also uh, determining whether we want to shift things around a little bit, uh, et cetera. So really just sort of a, a check-in to see how that's doing. Is it achieving the goals that we set out to achieve, and do we need to make adjustments? And then the last item, and then I'll, I'll pass it back over to you guys. Um, while I'm not personally attending Interop or ETH Denver, uh, Interprotocol teams there, and uh, two of our board members are going to be there, at least two of them, perhaps three. Uh, so there will be a DCF presence, just unfortunately not me this year. We'll also be co-sponsoring uh, one of the side events at Interop called Cosmos Peak. So hopefully you get a chance to show up for that and, and meet some of the broader team. Um, looking at my notes, that's all I've got for you guys today. So I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you so much. That's great. That's great to hear. And I'm really excited about to see what, what DCF does for grants. You know, <laughs> that's always exciting. So things, su <laughs> things suddenly appear that other people envision and, uh, you know, and they just come out of the community that there's just, that, that is just one of the most exciting things to me ever. So, <laughs> Um, so, and then uh, now we have Vanessa on partner programs. And the Hi, future. everyone. <laughs> yeah. What was that, Dean? I said, and the future. <laughs> and the know, future. Oh, hands. the future. The future, <laughs> Jazz Hands, Mainnet, and so many delightful partners. We've really enjoyed working with a number of the Mainnet partners and stay in touch with, you know, the coming months and then going live and so, you know, we'll have more on that in future community calls. But today, I'm excited to share that one of our partners and community members who's contributed open source smart contracts for the lending protocol and other uh, DeFi uh, contracts that are available, uh, they're launching a Agoric Bootcamp so that you, listeners here who are developers and have experience, who may or may not have Web3 background, have some familiar with JavaScript, can join this Chainboard Academy. Uh, you can expect to become an Agoric native with the ability to build and deploy dApps on Agoric at the end of this course. It's a 10-week bootcamp. Uh, each student is assigned to a mentor. There's weekly online lectures and home assignments, and then a project towards the end. Um, you can join Discord and see uh, where Chainboard is going to be making announcements, just letting people know when to sign up. It's going to be kicking off in early March 2023. Uh, they also have a site where um, you can see more information. Uh, it's agoric-bootcamp.super.site. Um, and you can see the prerequisites such, including you know one to two years of programming experience with Node.js, uh, good understanding of all of development and CS fundamentals, and some understanding of blockchain fundamentals. So there's uh, a lot of good opportunities. We've seen a preview of the lessons. We're really happy with what we're seeing there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, they'll also be on Discord making announcements so you can um, get more information there. 
Sad is really uh, awesome. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah me too. <laughs> We've been lucky and, enough to have them present in person for us at conferences as well. So this is I was just a say, really nice thing that they're doing for us. Actually, given workshops, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if you, yeah. So if you were at Gateway, you got to meet them in person. Uh, if you were at Cosmoverse since went to their workshop, you got to meet Anil, who is a regular at our uh, Discord office hours. So it's just really nice things come together. Very cool. Anything else, or should we hand it back to, to Santi? Um, I think that's it. I just wanted to say also thanks to Simply Staking. They've been working you know, around the clock with us on a lot of efforts for this upcoming Vaults launch on the Oracle side. So they're here. Just want to say thanks again, and i um, happy to hand it over to Santiago. Awesome. Cool. Santi? Yeah, let's, uh, let's close this up. So um, just a kind of quick note on events. Um, you know, we're going to be at the UPenn blockchain uh, event, which actually starts today. Uh, and goes until the 12th. So, um, hey, Jeet, how's it going? <laughs> uh, Jeet from our uh, partner programs team is going to be there. So if you just happen to be at this UPenn conference, let us know. Uh, we'll get you in touch with Jeet. Um, uh, you know, I think Rick uh, covered a bit of our interop um, attendance. We're going to have Dean speaking there. Uh, you're going to on a panel. Um, so definitely look forward to that if you're, if you're going to be in Denver at that time. Uh, Dean, I think you're speaking on the 28th um so that sounds yeah. right so i think actually tickets for this event are gone <laughs> so i think they either move to a t paid tier or you have to message an admin for uh for another ticket so if you haven't gotten your tickets i highly recommend uh prioritizing that um and then uh another piece of event so we have our you know um our uh our friends from Inner Protocol are going to have the next community call on February 16th, that Thursday. So uh, approximately, what is that? A week from now, exactly, isn't it? So if you're around, definitely hop in there. Um, I'm sure they'll bring a bunch of updates to the table. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for right now. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, is there any anything else people want to share before we kind of close this off? Uh, I think I may also be at a panel at ETH Denver. So that's following an Interop Summit. Um, that will be about the Clipper chip because we're seeing a lot of the same kind of, you know, crappy, uh, 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 regu you know, crappy regulatory behavior and, and crappy, you know, making law through through blog posts and stuff like that <laughs> that we saw in the Clipper chip era. And, you know, people fought back then and people pushed then and, and largely succeeded. And so there'll be some discussion of that in a panel at, uh, at East Denver. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of that topic more generally, but, um, but keep an eye out for that. So that, that will also be later this month. Okay. What, what day is that, Dean, uh, planned for? Um, yeah. I think March 2nd, okay. but I'm not actually sure. We'll post okay. it when, when it gets firmed yep, up. Yep, Cool. All right. Let us know. Um, fantastic. Well, thank you, our old speakers, Roland, Jesse, Vanessa, Dean, Rick. Much appreciated. And, uh, We'll see you. We'll see you folks in a month, and if not earlier, uh, on the Inner Protocol community call next week. So, thank you. Perfect. Good stuff, Santi. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks all. See you in Discord. Thank you.